Sir Jim Ratcliffe given Man United takeover update after Private Joel Glazer talks. Ineos Chief Sir Jim Ratcliffe is on the cusp of striking a $1.3 billion agreement for a 25% minority stake in Manchester United after months of submitting bids to the Glazers. After weeks of speculation, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is expected to seal his $1.3 billion deal for a minority stake in Man United imminently. Alongside Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani, the Ineos chief has been attempting to buy into his boyhood club for almost a year after the Glazer family announced they were seeking strategic alternatives last November. While Sheikh Jassim and Ratcliffe were both originally attempting to strike a deal for a full takeover, the latter's willingness to purchase a 25% stake in the club is set to bear fruit. And following reports last month outlining the structure of an agreement between Ratcliffe and the Glazers, it now seems as though official confirmation of said deal is on the horizon. Mirror Football understands that Ratcliffe's deal for a minority stake in the club is set to be confirmed during the upcoming international break, meaning an announcement could be just days away. The petrochemicals billionaire is set to assume full control of sporting operations as per the terms of the deal, which will enable Old Trafford to undergo much-needed renovations. While plenty is expected to change in the coming months with Ratcliffe at the helm, the Glazer family will remain in power and, seemingly, work alongside the Ineos chief. Discussions between the two parties have even been taking place behind the scenes in recent weeks, according to a recent report from the Manchester Evening News. They claim that Ratcliffe and Joel Glazer have participated in secret video calls ahead of the ratification of the deal, with Ratcliffe expected to bring his own people in. Chief Executive Richard Arnold and football director John Murto are two of the people believed to be at risk. Ratcliffe is also expected to hire a sporting director in a bid to improve United's recruitment strategy with Monaco's former transfer guru Paul Mitchell at the top of his wanted list. Despite overseeing the club's worst start to a season since 1974, Eric Ten Hag is expected to remain in his post under Ratcliffe. The Dutchman still has credit in the bank after a fine maiden year at the helm, but recognizes results have to improve after overseeing nine defeats in 17 matches so far this season. Again and again. United injury updates provided. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has admitted Christian Eriksen and Rasmus Hoyland could be doubts for Denmark's games during the international break. Both Danes came off in the second half of the 1-0 win over Luton Town, with another Scandinavian, Victor Lindelof, bagging the only goal of the game. Eriksen fell awkwardly, while Hoyland continued after receiving treatment, but was withdrawn for Anthony Martial as the Reds held out for three points. Denmark have key European Championship qualifiers against Slovenia, Friday 17th November, and Northern Ireland, Monday 20th November, later this month, as they bid to reach the finals in Germany. Northern Ireland will be without Johnny Evans, and there will be question marks over whether his teammates can play in Belfast, with the Danes currently in second spot in Group H. In this moment, I can't tell anything about it because I don't know. Ten Hag said at his press conference when asked about Hodgland's issue. We do an assessment and we have to wait 24 hours for the conclusion. So we'll give the medical team 24 hours to see what the problem is, if there is a problem. You don't want to miss any player. There's also Christian Eriksen. That is our season at this moment. We have so many injuries. But therefore you have a squad. We have talked about it many times. But of course the routine levels are dropping down, the routine levels in the team, in the way of playing. But hopefully players are coming back and those new injuries are not too bad. Pushed on Ericsson, he replied, he slipped, but it's the same. We have to do the assessment, set the diagnosis, set the conclusion, and then we'll know where we are. When asked specifically by Bain Sports if the pair would have to pull out of the Denmark squad, Eric again suggested it was still too early to say. It could be, he admitted, but I can't give now a good assessment. We have to wait and then see what the conclusion is.
Aaron Wan-Bissaka was unavailable for the Luton game due to illness, while there are hopes the likes of Luke Shaw and Ahmad may be back soon. I think so and we get one or two back, said Ten Hag, referring to the period after the break. And hopefully, it's not too bad with Hoyland and Eriksson. Again and again. Victor Lindelof provided boss Eric Ten Hag some relief with his first goal in three years as Manchester United defeated Luton 1-0. But the win has not come without a cost, with Ten Hag banned for United's next Premier League game. Meanwhile, Paul Sekoles bemoaned Man United's lack of creativity in their 1-0 win over Luton Town. They got the job done, Sekoles told Premier League Productions. It wasn't a great performance, as we've seen, probably didn't create as much as you would have liked. Luton made it very difficult for them throughout the game, but it's job done. They've won the game and hopefully now, they have a nice little break for a couple of weeks and come back and find a bit of form. On the other side, Ten Hag working overtime. Eric Ten Hag is putting in extra time at the training ground as he tries to get things right at Manchester United. The under-fire boss has caught out staff at United's Carrington base by arriving before 7 a.m., then staying on long after the players have left. Sometimes he goes home in the afternoon for a couple of hours, returning to work until 8.30 p.m. A source said, Nobody can accuse Ten Hag of a lack of effort. He's been coming in very early and leaving very late, sometimes not leaving until 7.30 p.m. Sometimes he's there so early he's catching the security and kitchen staff on the hop elsewhere. Greenwood future considered. Getafe have turned on the charm to persuade Mason Greenwood his future lies in Spain. The striker joined the La Liga side on loan in September, as Manchester United ruled he could not play for them after he was charged with various offenses. Greenwood denied all the charges and they were later dropped by the CPS. He was farmed out to the Spaniards on transfer deadline day to try to rebuild his career away from the spotlight and he has bagged three goals and two assists in nine games, settling into the Spanish way of life with his partner and baby daughter. The 22-year-old remains a United player and is under contract until 2025. But Getafe bosses are hoping to prize Greenwood away from Old Trafford sooner and plan to open talks for a deal. On the other side, Ten Hag on Hodgland injury. Eric Ten Hag has spoken about Rasmus Hodgland's injury. The Danish striker was forced off with a hamstring injury. Ten Hag said after the game, In this moment I can't say anything about it, I don't know. We did an assessment, we have to wait for 24 hours what the conclusion is. Again and again. The Man United manager hailed a good day when speaking to Match of the Day, but was frustrated his side couldn't score any of their first half chances. He said, It is a good day. We needed the win and we got it but we could make life more easy by scoring early on and getting a second. We created the chances, but we didn't score apart from one. I am happy with that and I am happy with the clean sheet. We had many chances before halftime and you should net one of them. After halftime, get the second and then the game is gone. Now you keep them alive and they can get an equalizer from balls dropping in the wrong place. The manager was also full of praise for Rasmus Hoylund and, despite a couple of glaring misses in search of his first league goal, insists the goals are not far away. He said that, Rasmus Hoylund has scored five times in the Champions League. He has the confidence and the goals will come. It would be better for composure, for the calmness, for the manager, the coaches and the team if we score early on, but if you don't, you have to keep going. I have to compliment the team that they kept going, kept organized, and didn't give anything away.